Miss Alwyn and I decline your request for an interview. I think that uh, 2013 uh, for St Mark's was a really challenging year. But in February, Rose Alwyn did speak to ABC Radio, admitting there had been a toxic culture at her college for one year in 2013. There was a toxic culture uh, and I'm really pleased to say that uh, we've worked with students uh, in ensuring that that does not exist uh, in this college today. Miss Alwyn's admission of a rogue bad year was prompted by this, an obscene magazine published at St Mark's in 2013. It had been given to arriving first year students or freshers as an introduction to the college and its senior student residents. You fresher girls quiver as he rams his hard <laughs> up into your liver. And while you lie yelping and bleeding in pain, you find yourself shouting and screaming his name. The OMAG, as it's called, is vile, sexually degrading and meant to be secret. Do not show anyone outside of college this OMAG. Anyone caught breaking these rules will be in more shit than you could ever imagine. And this is what Rose Alwyn, who has been both Dean and Master of St Mark's over the last 15 years, had to say of that 2013 OMAG. Well, I think that the contents of the 2013 OMAG are abhorrent. Uh, they are deplorable and they certainly speak against the values of the college and everything that the college has worked so hard for in its 93-year uh, history. Um, and uh, they actually make me feel quite ill. It seems that Marx only reacts when it's caught out. When this 2013 O Week magazine came to light last year, Rose Olwyn called it abhorrent, disgusting, and something that was now dead and buried. There was no public acknowledgement by the college that this was part of a pattern. Well, it is. Just a few weeks ago, we received an almost identical magazine, printed two years later in 2015. Again, it's obscene. And like in 2013, it was given out to the students in their first days at St Mark's. It will f you so hard you'll be left with amnesia. I was assured that there was no OMAG after 2013. And what do we have here? One from 2015. So everything they've said about cleaning up the culture, all this great stuff they do during O Week, it's just a lie. It's a complete lie. And this proves it. 2015, two years later, this was found out. It's still going on. For Adelaide University Student Representative Council, led by President Matthew Bowie, enough is now enough. Outraged by the publication of yet another St Mark's College obscene magazine. You look at this and it's the same content. We've got disgusting poems, we've got the whole lot and it's just disgraceful. For Matthew and fellow councillors Olivia Savas, and Talia Penn, the O Week magazine is black and white proof St Mark's culture is deeply entrenched and unchanging. Things to do at college, there's a list of 35 things here. Number 24, make a sex video using the CCTV camera in the late meals room. It's basically like an aristocratic cult. Like you're either the bottom person or the top person. You're either to be killed or to kill. You can't, there's like no in between. But to be clear, a lot of students go to St Mark's College and have an amazing time. Well, so they say. They've been brainwashed. What is going on inside the walls of this college? The people at St Mark's become your family, an abusive family where you have a case of Stockholm Syndrome, where you feel like you have to stay and you have to be there and you have to be involved even though it's depressing mm. and abusive. It is experiences like Elizabeth's that has the SRC fuming. They see it as their job to protect all students, something they don't feel St Mark's or the university is doing. Do you think this damages the reputation of your university? I almost hope so. I almost, I almost wouldn't mind. If that puts the university in a place or they, they feel like, you know, they lose numbers, then good. It shows them that they haven't done enough. 
We represent 21,000 students and a fair chunk of those are at St Mark's and we will be representing them and advocating for their welfare and we're not going to stop doing it. We're here to stay. If you needed any proof as to why students at Adelaide University are pushing for direct and immediate action against St Mark's and other residential colleges, it's in the university's last failed attempt to deal with the issue. Last year, the university established a task force to tackle sexual harassment and assault on campus and in the colleges. Victim stories were shared, cases compiled, and St Mark's master, Rose Alwyn, was questioned. And what came of all this effort and investigation? Precisely nothing. Whilst at the time it felt like we had a chance to get something done, by the time it had wrapped up, it was very clear to us that we weren't there to do things, we were there to look like we were doing things. Declan Price Brooks and National Union of Students President Mark Pace were on the University of Adelaide's Respect Now Always Task Force last year. Is that disappointing that here was an opportunity for real change and it didn't happen? Definitely. I felt cheated. I felt as though the university had wasted their first good opportunity in generations to start to solve these problems. They elected not to use that opportunity. It was devastating to us. Have, have previous student councils been aware of issues within these residential colleges? Definitely. Um, this has been something that student representatives have known for um, decades now. Um, I met someone who said that um, their parents had raised this issue at campus and that their parents' parents, their grandparents, um, said that this was an issue when they were studying at the university. Um, I wish much luck to Matt and the other members of the current SRC and hope that they can succeed where we failed. You feel like you failed? I feel like we were put in a position where success was impossible, where despite all our best efforts, we failed to solve the problem. With the majority of students at St Mark's enrolled at Adelaide University, we approached the Vice-Chancellor Peter Rathjen. He also refused to talk to us. However, he did meet SRC President Matt Bowie. Did you walk away from that meeting with the Vice-Chancellor feeling like this was something that was going to be taken seriously and would be tackled? Absolutely not. I was told St Mark's has had a very, very rich tradition of being affiliated with the university and this is not something they're going to be touching and they'll be leaving it to Rose Alwyn to be dealing with this. I'm really angry, actually, and I want to see change. When Aria Kerwin dared to break the code of silence in St Mark's, she was labelled a liar by past and present students. The chairman, Richard Birchnell, going so far as to say our 60 Minutes story in March... ..gave viewers a very distorted, misleading and sensationalised picture of St Mark's. But just last week, an admission that Aria was telling the truth. In a letter, he accepted that... One student showed inappropriate material on a TV screen and two others publicly bared their backsides. The punishment? They are being required to undertake a three-hour workshop on gender equity, sexual harassment and what it means to be an ethical bystander. The college has been unable to establish the veracity of one particularly serious allegation which you made, and has chosen to report it to South Australian police. We understand that allegation to be Aria's claim that she was forced to undress for older male students. <laughs> Don't send your children to St Mark's because you have no control over what happens and the, the atmosphere of secrecy stops you having any knowledge of what is actually taking place, what your child is going through and then as a parent, you just can't offer support if you don't know what's happening. Aria's bravery empowered Elizabeth and Jenny to speak out about the toxic culture that has existed at St Mark's for generations. They're now hoping their voices will become a chorus and that finally there will be no further victims of acts carried out in the name of tradition. I'm not after retribution. It's been a long road, but I'm starting to heal. 
I just want to make sure what happened to me won't happen to anyone else. I want things to change within St. Mark's. I hope by telling my story it'll be easier for the next person to come forward and share theirs. The college won't listen otherwise. We can't make lasting change um, in the way that a Vice-Chancellor or in the way that Rose Alwyn, Alwyn can, um, but we can show that we have people, we have numbers and uh, we don't agree with what is going on there and we don't believe it's okay. You've had enough. We've had enough.